hi, my name is Chad Holt, and today we're going to show you how to pull off the front wheel, pull off the front brake caliper, and then we're going to actually do a wheel bearing replacement. Um, so I've already got the process started here a little bit. As you can see, I have the wheel off, um, just the four lug nuts, and then I removed the caliper. There's two bolts here that you can see. Um, right down there they are. I popped that off, but... You won't ever see it on video, but there's a little bit of play here. So my bearings are going bad. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this spindle off here and I'm going to get these bearings replaced. So I pulled off the other side also. And, uh, just to double check and I haven't took the caliper off yet, but I don't have that play here. Um, and I had the play even with the caliper on over there. So that tells me these bearings are getting bad. So I need to replace them before they get too bad and, and, and uh, damage my spindles. So to take the caliper off, um, it's a 12 millimeter. I used a 12 millimeter deep, uh, deep well socket. And I used an impact gun to take off the wheels. Uh, those are 14 millimeter nuts. And then <clears throat> here's the bearing kit that I got. It's a Pivot, Pivot Works uh, bearing kit for the fronts and uh, hope it's all the, <laughs> I hope it's the right right kind but uh, let's see for Yamaha so hopefully that's the right one there's the number P pwfwk y 9 0 um, but uh, I have these around because it seems like these bearings always go bad in times that you can't get them here so I had these around I also have a set of rears for my carrier around and then when I, once I put these in I'll order another set and have them on hand I mean I can't remember what I paid for these but I can't believe they're much more than 40 or 50 bucks and honestly just having them around it makes it a lot easier when stuff like this happens and uh, I'll come over here and I'll show you basically this bolt right here you got to take it loose I always, uh, I always put this stuff together with a little bit of blue uh, Loctite. There's the second bolt. See it down there. And then get them out. See that's some of that, some of that stuff there on the bolt. <laughs> that's the blue Loctite. And then. This top one here of course this stuff's always harder to do one hand and trying to film plus I shake so bad anyways okay so both of those are removed now it's basically just getting this off and that's it and you can see those brake pads are still pretty good shape but that's all there is to taking off the caliper. Now we're going to take out this scar key. That's taken out. <clears throat> so it appears to be a 19. I have that wrap because I use that on my lug nuts on my pilots and I don't like to damage up my rims. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Let's see what happens. Oh, I might have had that off before. So that's a castle nut, so you can put your cotter, your uh, cotter key through there, and keep it from coming loose. And I don't know if that washer was on the back side or where that was, but I'll pay attention on the other side. But uh, 
There it is. So there's a space there, it looks like, in the back side here. And there's a spacer here in the front side too. So that's why I like to do one side at a time. So then I can, if I get, if I get mixed up somewhere along the the way, I can go look at the other side. Um, so that's where we are. Next process will be popping these seals out, popping these seals out of here, and then getting these bearings out of here. There's a seal right here, and then inside there's the bearing. And I've ordered a bearing puller, so we're going to try to do this with a bearing puller instead of beating these out with a uh, socket and screwdriver and that. So we'll see how that goes. You can see everything here looks good. Nice and tight. The other thing I'll do, <clears throat> anytime I take something apart, I like to try to clean things up a little bit around the back side of it. You know, like this, I'll clean this up. I'll just try to clean things up because you don't have this stuff apart very often. And when you do, why not just go ahead and take a little bit extra time and clean it up. And uh, then you can, when you put it back together and you don't touch it for another two or three years, uh, it's not near as bad. Now, I will tell you one thing I noticed on these YFZs is that sometimes you'll get some play. Like, if you grab a hold of the wheel, it's a lot easier to see this, that this bearing is possibly, you know, bad when you've got more leverage on the wheel. But I always move it, like, top to bottom or left to right to here this way. And uh, it's easier to tell when you got a tire on it. That's how I noticed. I actually noticed it a couple rides ago, and I was like, ah, I better get that replaced. Um, but the other thing that you'll notice on a YFZ is they have these grease, they have these grease certs here. Well, what some hap sometimes happens, this one's a little filthy. What happens is that grease, um, almost seems like almost every ride, if you put grease in these, um, this will stiffen these all up, but sometimes you'll get some play in those. Let me see, this one I thought had some play in it the last time. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. Oh, there's a little bit. Let me, where's it moving at? there you can kind of see that movement so putting grease in here will basically stop that for you know that ride or whatever but the other thing you can do here and I had a buddy show me or tell me about this instead of going and replacing all this stuff you can actually put a machine washer in here on each side of this and what it does is it basically sandwiches this tighter and it'll make this so much tighter here versus going out and buying all these kits to replace this stuff and then once it loosens up again, just replace the machine washer inside of here, and that'll tighten it back up. But buying these kits and stuff, it just, you know, I don't know that it's going to fix your issue for long. I mean, it obviously will make it better, but it's going to wear again. And they're pretty expensive. And these machine washers aren't that much. And I'll, uh, I'll grab those and show you what they look like. <clears throat> okay, so I talked to you about those machine washers for the A-arm. Well, this is what they look like. So it just looks like a regular, a regular washer. Um, there's four of them here. I've had some extra ones. I think I picked these up at like a local hardware store. So, and uh, I obviously don't have any way to measure the thickness, but you can see that it's about, it's a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a 32nd or right around an inch in diameter. And then the ID is like a half inch you can see that on the camera and then I can try to look at the thickness it's going to be very difficult but I would say it's probably about 50 thousandths or so it's a little under a 16th but uh, that's what you can put up there in your a-arm and that'll help take some of that out of there um, if you have any play put them on, one on each end and all the different spots and then put the cap back over it but uh, I bring this up because you may see some play in there and think it's your wheel bearing automatically, which it might just be your A-arms moving around there at that pin point. So a uh, good thing to do is grease them up, then try it and see what happens. And if, the, if your A-arms are moving, this is something you can do. But don't mistake that for a wheel bearing issue. So right now, this is the current situation. You can see I got 
both wheels off. I got one spindle off, got both calipers off. Um, and honestly, I'm not gonna be able to finish this all up because I don't have my bearing puller tool yet. But uh, once I get that bearing puller tool, it goes down to the smaller diameters and it'll fit inside the bearing and it has a slide hammer and I will be able to pull it out. Okay, so I told you earlier that I do keep another set of, you know, bearings on hand. These are my rear carrier bearings. And I actually have a puller that I use for those. So here, here's what it looks like. I bought this off of Rocky Mountain. It's a 40 millimeter. That's the diameter of this. And if you notice, this will go right through there. So what you do is you, you basically, I can't do it with my, I need the tools, but anyways, you will, you basically take and pull this back and it threads in, into, into here, which makes this split out. And um, it will actually put pressure on the end, on the inside of the, keep that thing It'll put pressure on the inside of the, the race of the bearing, as you can see. And there's a little bit of a lip right there. And what that'll do, once I can get it in there, obviously, I just got to pull this out of there. Then I can take that slide hammer and I can slide it. And I'll be able to pull bearings out of the carrier. And it keeps me from having to beat them. Beat them out with a, um, a punch or whatever it may be. But once I get that in there, then I just... And just pull that, you know, hit that all against there with this slide hammer. And it'll pull it out. Now I don't know what this is. This one's maybe a three or four pound, but uh, it pulls them right out. Now I've seen some people say, "Oh, you can put them in with this." I would never do that. I would never put that, um, put all that stress and stuff on the inner race of the bearing. So take them out. Don't care. Putting them uh, back in, I would never do that. I always find the socket, or actually, I always use the old bearing, and I tap them down in, and I put them in that way. That's how I do it. Um, the other thing, same buddy that told me about uh, putting these, these uh, machine washers in the A-arms told me another little secret about these bearings. And I'm not going to take it out on this one because I'm not uh, doing it right now, but I'll show you on the fronts when I do. If you take a needle and you pop this out, and then uh, this, this outside seal here, because this is a sealed bearing, if you pop that out, you can take some machine uh, grade grease, which let me show you what that's. So this is a synthetic grease, but if mar marine grade grease, synthetic grease, something, some good grease, not no, not no cheap grease, not no coastal grease. You know what I mean? Get some good grease and then you pop this out with a needle and then you go here and you just pack grease in this bearing all the way around and then do the other side, pack grease all the way in. And once you get um, all that in there, then you take these seals and you just push them right back in and make sure they're all seated and they're good. And then that'll make that bearing, uh, I think, last a little longer. And honestly, what it'll surprise you is when you pull this apart, how little amount of grease is in there. So that was something he told me about. And honestly, I do that on all my bearings now uh, on these four-wheelers because they just see so much water. Even though you try to avoid water holes, maybe some of you do, some of you don't. But that just helps, you know. Uh, so that's another suggestion I would uh, tell you to do. But uh, this slide pole, this is, this is a great thing. So I've ordered a smaller one off of, I got it off of eBay. And it, it works the same way, except the tools that are smaller, because this is a 40. I think the smallest you can get this style in is down to a 25. And it won't fit through the fr front bearings. So the ones that I'm getting, they're like longer. And then you run a bolt into them and they expand out. And I think it goes down to, hmm, I don't know, maybe 10 millimeters or so in diameter which is close to about three eighths of an inch. But this is on Rocky Mountain. They are, there's other places that sell these kits. This one might've been 40 bucks for this. The problem is I can't find these in smaller sizes like I need for the front. That's what I wanted to do, just buy a different call it here, but I can't find them. So I had to buy another whole set. I got it off eBay for like 30 bucks or something. Okay, so I thought what I'd do is go ahead and show you this this bearing kit. This is for the front of the YFZ 450. That's the number, Pivot Works number. And then here's what's in the package. So you got a seal, a larger seal on a smaller bearing, and then a larger bearing. And then there's another smaller seal, and you can see the difference in size. 
So um, you got that for both sides. And it also looks like there's maybe, I don't know if there's some instructions in the bottom or not. I don't really need the instructions, but um, that's what comes in this kit. So I, <clears throat> so I went through and I did actually have some marine grade grease. So this is, this is what I use. And you can just see one's red, one's uh, blue. I really honestly, it probably doesn't much matter, but this is what I'm going to use. And then I literally was not kidding you when I set a needle. And what I do is try to come in here and uh, just get underneath the seal if you can. This needle seems big for these, but take it underneath of it. Doesn't help that I shake so much. Maybe. Oops, almost had it. I'm gonna come around on this side so you can see me better. If you can see that, I just go right around there just like so. Now look, look in that bearing. Do you see any grease in there? Hardly any grease in there. Hardly any. And then here I might have, you know, I might put a little indentation on the end of it, but nothing big deal. So I'll go ahead and I'll set that one up here. So, and then uh, where did I get my grease? I got it over here. And I'll just take a little bit of grease. Push it down in there, like so. We'll clean it up a little bit once we get it in there. I should have grabbed a, a rag or a paper towel. So, got that in there. Grab a rag real quick. So as you can see, I packed it full of grease. Now, as soon as I push that seal back in, some, some of that grease is going to come back out, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take this seal. I'm just going to come back here. I'm just going to go right around here. Now I know these bearings say they're lifetime warranty. Well, I contacted these people and told them, hey, I had some bearings go bad. I kept them for a while. They never returned my call, nothing. So I wouldn't tell them you're doing this, <laughs> but I, uh, I quite honestly would rather not, I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna be taking these out apart all the time because they put no darn grease on them. So that's one side. So I'll go back to the other side. So the best thing to do is just to, this needle that I got, I, would, I almost wish it was a little bit tinier. Whoops. Okay, and see on this side, some of that grease that I put in there pushed through. So some more grease. I'm just going to go around here. Just put a little bit on the top first and then come back and push it down in. But I told you there was hardly any grease in here. I don't know if you believe me, but... So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push that seal back in. See the grease is going to pop out around it. That's cool. Just make sure it's all the way down in there. And then once you get that, you can take a rag 
Just go around and clean that up. And then get inside the bearing. Grease everywhere. There I have. There's my bearing with grease in it. <laughs> It'll definitely gonna last longer. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of them, but I wanted to show you uh, how I did that. And like I said, it's just a needle. Just use a needle and go around the outside. And once you pop it up, once you get the seal popped up, then just push this on in and then just come spin it, the bearing, and it'll pop right out. Piece of cake. Take you a little bit maybe the first time like it did me, but once you get it, you'll be good. Um, and then do your bearings. It'll help, it'll help them last longer, I believe. So, and there again, marine grade grease. Doesn't necessarily have to be this kind or any type of grease is better than what is what's in there so i'll go ahead and do these other ones i'm not obviously going to painstakingly make you watch all that but so i took the spacers out of both sides and cleaned them up and i put them back down there on the the actual spindle but now i'm going to pull out these seals so i have this like pick looking screwdriver type thing which you can use this and get them out of there it doesn't really matter so much on the old seals um but they also make a tool basically like this. It's a, seal, it's a seal puller and you can get in there and pull them out. Um, I mean, it's a preference thing. Like if they're harder to come out, this gives you a little bit more leverage. I'm gonna probably have to do this on a better surface. Um, but uh, you, can, you can pop these things out with this. Uh, and uh, it's a little easier to get a little bit more leverage with it but you just put it underneath of it and then just lift up on it. There you go. And you see I pop it right out. I just don't have the best surface. I'm trying to video for you. So that's what that bearing looks like inside there. So you can still see a little grease in there. I guess let me see if I can't get this one out. This one on the inside is a little bit more tricky because it's in there good. I don't want to rip my seat but you see I ripped the seal just trying to get underneath of it but here you can see I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it oh, that one was in there a little bit and if I had to guess guys I'd say that's the bearing that's bad what do you think you can see there's a bunch of rust in here um, and I'd say that's the bearing that's bad. This one, I mean, it looks like it's still okay. And I mean, this one, oh yeah, absolutely, that's it. I mean, it's not spinning, not spinning freely. It's not spinning freely at all, and it's all rusty. That tells me that's the one. Good call, good call to change them. Preventative maintenance, guys, PM, preventative maintenance goes a long way in keeping your bike in good shape and not doing more damage to other parts. <clears throat> so, I have a tool coming obviously for this, but I thought I'd just start to see how easy these come out. Well, so you have a bearing on the inside, you have the bearing on the outside, and in between it, there's a, um, a spacer, if you will. And, <clears throat> show you here. So you can kind of see it. I've already whacked this thing once uh, to get to get this looser. It wasn't quite as loose. But what you got to do is force that thing to one side, and then you come in from the other side, and you get your you get your punch right on the edge of that inner race, and then you hit it, and you kind of go around the other side and you hit it, and this bearing will work its way right out. And then once you get that out, then you'll have this, this tube out of the way, and the bottom one's a piece of cake to get out, right? But this is the problem. You gotta get this thing to catch on that edge, and then you just hit it out. I thought I'd just do one the old way and do one the new way, just to show you the difference. Or sometimes they have a bunch of it stuck in the barrel. Up. And the damn thing keeps going in the barrel. Oh, 
moving. Something's moving because I'm getting more space in between there. I really want to try to stay on that race and not get in the bearing though. Of course, if you have a press, you can do them with a press too. But honestly, I don't know how, I still don't think you can get them out with a press. Press them in, obviously, but you can't get, I don't know, I don't know that you can get them. Now, somebody knows maybe they could put that on. I'll just show you my progress here. Use my, it's kind of like a pointer, if you will. So, I don't know how much you could see before, but let's go on this side. So you can see I got so much more space in here. Now you can see this, that spacer I'm talking about. Look how much floppy it is in there. So that tells me something's moving. And uh, it should be this other bearing on this side. And it looks like maybe it is moving. It's hard to tell. It doesn't, doesn't come out real, real quick. I suppose I could hit it with a bigger hammer, but I know what's going to happen. I'm going to shoot it into the bearing area. Oh, wrong side, Chad. Like I said, I just keep going back to side to side. out there you can see we're getting we're almost out of there keep hitting it actually what we have to do damn thing this is what happens you get you come off the race and then you get stuck. And then you fight it for hours and you get pissed off. Then you just beat the piss out of it until it comes out. <laughs> okay, so there's the spacer. Let me come over here so you can see it. There's the spacer. So it's actually, that's, that's interesting. It goes down to the different inside races. Here's exactly <laughs> what I told you is happening. You really want to hit right here on this inner ring. But sometimes you get out there and then... The punch gets wedged in there. Now that I have it loose, I should be able to get it out of there pretty easy. But yeah, I stuck it right through the seal and everything. It doesn't matter, these are junk bearings. Point is, I got the damn bearing out. Now, now that I've done that, take a look at this thing and make sure this looks good. I always try to clean up a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like here. So you can see inside there. Quite intricate, you know. So here's where the bearing goes down. The bearing sets against. Let me grab my tool. <clears throat> the bearing sets down against this surface here. And then that spacer. Let's just put it back in there. That spacer sets in there, so my inner race of the bearing basically sets up against this here, or excuse me, the outer race sets here, and the inner race sets against here. And then that spacer I just removed, it will go down there and set against this edge on this other bearing, and then the outer race will have another, this outer race will have another surface just like that one that it sets on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this other one out.
So I'm just going to hit on the inner race, which is a lot easier to see. Stop shaking long enough to hit it. Making progress, and there again. I really should have it up on something because if it gets down to the bottom, then see I'm on, I'm flush right now. So I really need to put it up on something, which I can use this, I guess. I'm gonna turn the camera just a bit so you can see a little better maybe. My plan is not to mess that all up. So I'm just going to tap that in a race. Bada boom, bada bing. There's the, there's the inside bearing. So grab my tool again. So right there, you can see that surface there is where that bearing sets on. So clean it up, make sure everything looks good. Honestly, if there's some nicks and stuff in here, as long as you can get the bearing in, so maybe sand it a little bit, there shouldn't be. But if the bearings get too bad, that's what happens. You can damage all these surfaces, and then this basically becomes throwaway. But that's how, that's absolutely how you take them out old school. Uh, now, I don't have that puller yet, but when we get it, I'm going to try it that way, and we're going to see which way is easier. Half tempted just to go ahead and do it <laughs> because it, honestly it's not hard but sometimes those darn bearings can be a real pain in the butt especially the bigger ones these front ones aren't so bad and then I'm gonna take that out of there and oh yeah this bearing is definitely It's, it feels dry, it feels really rough, it's not smooth. And honestly, this bearing here is not much better. It feels like something's rubbing the whole time. Of course, I just beat the hell out of the inside race, but um, I noticed that when it was in the bike. Or when it was still in the spindle, but yeah, it's rough too. So they definitely needed to replace it. It was a good call to do it. So, and, so let's go ahead and We got, we got this one goes in here, and we've got we got this one that goes in here. Now, what I normally try to do on these things is I'll tap this thing around to get it started, and then once I get it in there, I'll use this one and hit around on it. And then once you get down in there, honestly, um, you like to find a socket that's a little bit tinier than this outer race. Because if you beat this down in there like this, then this damn bearing is going to get stuck in there. And you're going to have to fight getting that bearing back out of there. So, um, now some people will put these in the freezer and then they say they just drop in. Or they'll put this in like a grill and they'll put these in the freezer and they say they just drop in. I've never had that look. Um, maybe maybe it works, but I've never had I've never had luck. Maybe I was too impatient, didn't wait long enough. I don't know whatever it is, but when I'm ready to do stuff, I'm ready to do it. That's why I started doing this. And thought I'd show you the old way. Um, but uh, that's kind of how it goes. Okay, so I went through my sockets here, and I found this 30. It's the brand of socket. Some Amazon, nothing special. But you can see that this is just a little bit shy of the bearing. So that won't get stuck. And I can, I can show you that by look. It's not going to get stuck in there. So when I'm hitting that down in there, it's not going to get stuck. Let me get this out of the way. So I'm just going to take a real thin little bit of look. Just 
going to aid me a little bit getting this in there. I suppose you could use some anti seize if you wanted to. Honestly, I don't know that's going to help much, but I'll put this on there. And then this. So I'm just driving it down in there, as you can see, not trying to kill it, just nice easy caps. And you should tell a difference in the sound and all, it should feel a little different when you get down there. Yep, I'm up against. So now I got to do the same thing for the inside one. Don't forget the space. <laughs> um, I'll actually put a little bit of lube on that. The other thing I would suggest is if these edges are all burred up or stuff, you might clean them, clean them up a little bit. Everything's better with lube, right? So just put, put a little bit of lube on that. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of it's going to squeeze out. We'll just. So this is the big end. Sometimes the other thing is, is aluminum will oxidize. Here's my bearing. Aluminum will oxidize and um, it'll cause, uh, cause things sometimes to be really difficult to come out. Now, before I go any further, I need to get a socket for this one, make sure that it's not gonna get hit down or get stuck down in there. So let me look through my set here. That one's not really big enough. Where's that one? That's the only one that was in the wrong area. So I think that one's gonna be it. It's a little bit tinier. Oh yeah, that's it. I don't know, for some reason it almost always works out that way. Um, so I have that in started in there. I can. It looks like I got about a quarter inch or so to go.
The other thing you can do a little bit is if it is a little bit sloppy, you can kind of slide it out, tap down on that side of the race, slide it out, tap on that side. And Bali, golly, I think we got her. Sure do show you. You can see, I don't know, maybe you can't see. The spacer's up against there, and the spacer's up against in the front. So now the thing I gotta put in is the seals. So I have two different size seals. Looks like we had bearings, so you know, one seal is going to be bigger. So this one goes in the back, like so. And uh, you can honestly, a lot of times you can just put these in with your, with your hand. Um, but the other thing I like to do, sometimes he's got springs inside of the inside here. So I like to put a little bit of grease in there too. Um, to make sure both these seals look like they're going to work. Oh yeah, they're going to work. And then those seals will go, they will go flush with the outside of these, I believe. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pack a bunch of grease in there. See, I'm just putting grease inside the inside the seal. Sometimes what happens is those springs get rusty. I know when I've taken them apart before, they've been rusty and they just kind of snap. Of course, you're really pulling on them even when you take them out. But. Again, I'm taking just a little bit of lubrication on there. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> that won't go in real easy. And uh, I'm going to put that in there. I need to dry my hand. Grease everywhere. If you wanted, you could use a rubber mallet on this, or you could put something on here. But honestly, I think with a little bit of grease on those, it's like I told you, you can press those right in with your hands. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're flush. Um, but I'll check it. Now, the other thing you can do, too, of course, some of this grease is going to come out. You know me here with all the grease. You can take a bunch of grease and you can try to put it up in between the seal and the bearing. Um, like I said, I don't know that it'll stay in there. Some of this grease is way down in there. Let me see if I can get some of it up. So, I don't touch my rotor a bunch. You can just go through there. Any little bit of extra to keep that water out, even if it holds off a couple rides. I mean, that water is so bad. Mud and water, it just destroys stuff. Any of you guys are off roaders and uh, taking Jeeps and things through. There we go. Now we got some up here at the top. You know, you know that. <laughs> Nothing good comes from mud and water. Maybe some fun. That's about it. Fun, fun at the time. Headaches later. And most of the time we stay out of the mud. I try to. But it is Ohio and just like any other year, it seems to rain a lot. Okay. And I did this. I'm on the radar now. Show 
Oh, okay, so what I did is what I'm saying is between the seal and the bearing, there's just a little bit of gap, and I just filled it with grease. I just, I just kind of uh, pushed that in there. And some of that other grease is going to come out when I push it onto the actual, um, I don't know what you're going to call it, axle or what have you. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side in now. And guys, I don't know everything, man. I just don't want to pay somebody $70 an hour for something that I can do myself. Even if you don't know, there's so many YouTube videos, and that's like kind of why I'm doing these a little bit, to try to help out people. You know, guys shouldn't be um, penalized because they want to do recreational type things. And you know, parts already cost a ton of money. And uh, having somebody work on your stuff, man, it's just not cheap. You know, I found out a lot of the stuff that I do now. I mean, I'm all about supporting local. Don't get me wrong. But I found out that the prices, I mean, I got a guy that lives down or works has a shop down the road from me. He won't change your tires unless you buy them from him, which I, I kind of understand that. But then the amount, amount of money it is to do it. Um, it's like, you know, 25 bucks a tire or something. It's like, geez, guy, it's crazy. Um, a lot of times you can find a gas station that'll do it for you, even though they're not really, sometimes won't, don't prefer to do it. They'd rather do, stick to their car tires or what have you. But, but I try to buy a lot of my stuff on, online and try to do it myself. And if I can't figure it out, I've probably got a buddy or somebody that can help or, you know, YouTube's there, like we said. So. That's it, man. That's how you that's how you change the bearings. It's not that hard. Just a little bit of patience. And then, so now I'm done, uh, and I can put that back on the bike. That's all there is to it, man. I'm guessing in a shop they charge you, I don't know, a couple hours of labor, 140 bucks, something like that, plus parts. Probably two hundred and some dollars, I'm guessing, at least. I don't know. So the one thing I forgot to tell you there is that you have these other things here. And guess what? We're going to put some grease on. These are like little spacers, bushings, if you will. Um, they go in. They go right in here. Maybe. Get about them. I had them still on the on the bike, and then there was a washer that I was wondering about. That washer actually goes on the inside, up up in the, here. You just want to make sure that you know when you're anytime you're working on anything like this is that you kind of stay organized make sure you lay the stuff out like you took it apart so when you go back to put it together or in my case I uh, I have the other side I haven't done yet so I can always tear it apart and pay real close attention and go slow especially now that I know what I've done here so I have everything accounted for now and I can put it back on. As you can see, I just pushed this back on there. Of course, all that, a lot of that grease that I had on the inside, it came out here, which is no big deal. Let's clean that up a little bit. And, uh, spins nice. So I put the castle nut back on, got this cotter keyhole lined up. And it'll spin a little rough, but got to remember you're this is a brand new bearing plus you're trying to 
um, you don't have any, you don't really have the wheel on there, but it'll spin a lot better and it'll loosen up a little bit. I mean, you don't want to over crank this thing down too much, but you also don't want it too loose that it's moving back and forth. But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put the caliper back on. And there again, I use some type of uh, blue Loctite on that just to try to help out. Okay, so I finally received my uh, bearing puller. I ordered on eBay. And what I did is I checked this thread. This is the one I got off Rocky Mountain ATV. I checked this threaded here for this, this adapter, and they're not the same. So if you do buy a set like this and you're just trying to buy these to go into that, that's not going to work out. Um, you need this, you're going to need to basically the slide hammer with it. So, um, these are the bearings that I had took out of the front. I have those just to show you kind of how this would work. It looks like this is the one I need to use, but it's very, very tight. So I don't know if I would need to grind down just a little bit to get that to go in, or if I could hit it with a hammer and get it to go. But you can see just how tight that is. I've tried to kind of hit it in a little bit without, you know, getting it, trying to get it stuck or what have you. And uh, I think it would go, but maybe it'd help just if it was ground down a bit. I'll try to show it better here. So as I spin it, here you go. So you can see it as I tighten this up, how it expands. So if you can imagine, you would put this thing through there, small, and then once you get it in there, you would expand it, and then it would lock on the inner part of the race there. But that's what I'm telling you on this one. The size is damn near the same size as the inner race of the bearing. You can see it'll go in there sideways, so I almost think that this thing is not quite round. And if you look in it, let me see, I don't know if I got that right, if you can see in there. If you look in that way, you can see it's not quite round. So I think it maybe if I just knocked off some edges, it'd go in there. So then you would put that through, and then same, same premise. You basically, of course this one's a little bigger, so it's going to be a little harder to spread apart. But you can see how it starts spreading apart. tools to be trying to do this with. Crescent wrenches aren't the best tool to do this with. But. So you can see how much, see how much that is expanded out. So So that's how you, this is, this is, this is how you could uh, take out those bearings without having to beat them out. I got impatient. This, this set was supposed to come uh, Wednesday. It showed up Friday afternoon. So I'm glad I went ahead and just did this and then come back here and show you how this would work. Um, and obviously what you do here, um, I'm gonna look here at this. So you can see how that goes in, the, in there. That pushes down into here and spreads that apart. And then if I want to put this on my slide hammer, I just put this on there. And then I, I screw this onto here. Honestly, you do all this first. Put this into the bearing, get it on the back side, and then you take this and do that number and that's gonna that's gonna pull these bearings out so definitely try to use this the next time uh, unfortunately the the whole shipping shipping thing kept kept me from showing you on these ones but I'm sure it's just a matter of time for I have to do something different but I ended up buying this kit off of uh, eBay and I don't know if you can find it somewhere else I bought this kit off of eBay and it was like 30 bucks Everywhere else I saw them, this kit, similar similar kit, was like close to $80. And uh, I don't see any name or anything on it. But comes in comes in a case, pretty nice. For no more than you're going to use it, it's a nice case. 
but uh, I did want to make mention that <clears throat> this one will not bolt up to that. It, uh, it just doesn't match up. And I can show you. It's one of those things where I think the thread pitch is different. Come on. So I use this one um, wrong, and this here, and you can see just won't go all the way on. It stops. So it, to me, it's like a it's like a thread pitch issue. And then if I try to take this one and put it on this end, it'll go it'll go on so far, and honestly, it'd probably work because there's probably three or four threads engaged. But you can tell it starts binding up. So. They're a little bit different in uh, thread pitch. What is going on here? So the handle comes off. I wonder if the handle is a different size. Unfortunately, if you get this thing on there the wrong way, you might not be able to get it off. I did. I got it off. So, but you can even see, I think these tools here, just no go. Thread pitch is different. So on the slide hammers, hopefully you can see quite a bit of difference in the thread pitch and the One looks like maybe it's a little more coarse than the other. So those were some of the questions I had when I was looking for this stuff. <laughs> like I just wanted to buy ends and use the same slide hammer and thought this would be cheaper. But honestly, I ended up finding this whole kit cheaper and I could have bought a new collet for. And you can't find the collets uh, even small enough down for here. And uh, But anyways, that's how this works. And... Um, Sorry I didn't get to try it this time. Next time we'll uh, we'll definitely use this, but this is something that if you've struggled with bearings and things, this might help you. And there's quite a few different sizes here. This one goes up bigger. I don't remember all the sizes off of this, but that's probably close to an inch. I can go through and get a tape measure and show you all of them, what they are starting. So here's this one. So yeah, it's about an inch, maybe slightly over, inch and sixteenths. That's the biggest one that comes here. Now remember, that's going to get a lot bigger. This one is probably, it's like three quarter inch started with. And it's going to, like I said, it's going to get bigger. This one, it's a little over half an inch. But you can even kind of tell in here, it's not 100% round. So I think that's the reason why wouldn't go in that race and then this one I oops I got this one expanded this one's even tinier this one I'm gonna guess is around 3 8 and it's pretty close to 3 8 so if you're uh, if you got a job that you're gonna be pulling some bearings and you want something like this um, maybe maybe this is a setup that would work for you I'm always looking to try to do stuff easier than uh, harder here um, when I'm working on this stuff. And sometimes, you, I think many of you guys know, having the right tool makes a huge difference. So, sorry I didn't get to show you this when I pulled them out. I'm glad I didn't wait because I'm riding tomorrow.